Um, I'd now like to welcome Ros Robinson, who's going to be talking about what's been happening in Western Australian legislation. Thank, thanks, Joy. Um, first part of this one is right first. Okay. Thanks, Joy. My name's Ros Robinson. I'm from Cat Haven in Western Australia. No, we're not a boarding facility. We're a, a cat shelter, um, the only open admission shelter in the whole of Western Australia. Every other organisation is an no kill shelter, including the RSPCA. Uh, so I just need to give you that premise so you know where we're coming from on the whole of the legislation issue. We've been around like most cat shelters for the last 40, 50 years, founded by some well-meaning ladies. The government gave us a block of land and we've taken in cats ever since. We take in between about seven and 8,000 cats a year and on our worst day we could have close to 80 cats and kittens coming in. So why do we, why do we need legislation in Western Australia? I think that's evident um, from this conference that desexing is one of the primary um, tools that we can use to reduce the other cat population. And for once, WA is going to be a leader in this field. Um, we don't normally lead in things. We still haven't got daylight saving, but it looks like we may have a cat bill. I just need to refresh anyone that was here two years ago, or for those that weren't here, how we've come to, to, to have cat legislation on the agenda. And there was absolutely no strategy involved. It's, it's been a bit of luck and, um, you know, stars in alignment. Our local member of uh, federal parliament happens to be Colin Barnett. And Colin had been elected as premier um, about six weeks. So we wrote to him and asked, will you come down and open our, um, our open day, or wet nose day as we call it, and being a good guy, Colin thinks, yeah, I'll do the woman fuzzies, getting a picture in the paper and whatever. But our open day happened to fall the day after a Chogham meeting. And, of course, the media pack were down at Cat Haven the day for our open day because they wanted to know what the Premier had dealt with um, with his first Chogham meeting with a, a Labour Prime Minister and all Labour Premiers. So we managed to position them under the Cat Haven sign and uh, got a bit, bit of free media there. And one of the reporters actually asked him, what do you think about cat sterilisation? Should it be compulsory? And Colin said, well, yes, we, we, should, we should have mandatory desexing for cats. Well, for us... Um, sorry. For us, that was sort of the green light. We've had cat laws on the agenda before. We've got the Local Government Act of 1995, which allows local authorities to have cat bylaws. And out of the 144 councils that we've got, because we're well over governed in Western Australia, I think about half a dozen may have taken up some sort of um, curfews, uh, restrictions on the number of cats, but that's been about it. Then we had uh, a Greens, Greens MP tried to introduce a pi private member's bill, which was thrown out because three strikes and you're out was her philosophy with cats. So we've got Colin Barnett coming down to Cat Haven and basically saying he believes in these laws. So he's painted himself into a corner. We start our letter writing campaign, applauding his stunts and asking when we're going to get it. And he hands it on as, as things happen in Parliament. It gets handed on to the Minister for Local Government, John Castrilli, who is not really interested in cats. He's trying to uh, reduce the number of local governments. He's got bigger things on his plate. So he hands it on to an MP by the name of Joe Francis. Now, Joe's a really good guy. Joe's, Joe's glass is not half full. Joe's glass is overflowing. He's... He's a new parliamentarian, he's green, no, he's not green, he's liberal, but he's, he's not quite sure how parliament really works, and he thinks, this is a piece of cake, I'm a passionate animal lover, we're going to get this in about three, three to six months. Um, he's driving the whole thing. We then start a letter writing campaign to all MPs, persuading them to come down to Cardhaven, because being the only open admission shelter, we want to see them what, what we're dealing with, what, what the oversupply of, um, of cats means to, to us. And it was, it was quite heartening, the uptake of them coming down. 
Um, and I would have most of my discussions with them in the euthanasia room, and I'd have them belled in the corner. And whilst there weren't any cats and they're being euthanized, there is a vibe in that room, uh, which is quite unpleasant. And I think a few of them went away quite shocked, uh, especially telling them that a conservative figure of 300,000 cats have been killed in that room. Was, um, it was quite daunting for them. So they come down to see things at the coal face, and we are hoping for bipartisan party support. The work, is a, the work was a lot harder and longer than any of us thought. The, the government pulled together all stakeholders to a meeting in early 2010. Uh, there was local government, MPs, uh, AVA, animal welfare groups, uh, I think that was about it, but uh, I think uh, there was what you could euphemistically say robust debate from all sectors, particularly in the animal welfare groups. Whilst everybody acknowledged that we need legislation, um, no one really wants to take the problem on. So we continue to lobby politicians to visit Cat Haven to see the open, uh, only a, sorry, open admission shelter. And in the middle of last year, John Castrilli comes down to Cat Haven to launch a cat discussion paper. And he wants, he wants feedback. He wants to know what people want out of this legislation. Uh, people were allowed to, all stakeholders, the public, any interest group were asked to contribute. And I know I flicked it to Joy to, so Animal Welfare League could have their two, two bobs worth, and I know she put one in for us. Uh, he got 591 submissions, and there was an overwhelming support for cat legislation. So we thought, that's it, we, um, we're going to have the bill by the end of the year. Well, WA isn't called WA for um, no reason. We, we were waiting a while, and waiting a while longer, and it all went quiet. And there's a very fine line between contacting MPs and being seen to stalk them. Um, and calls to Joe. Uh, Joe was frustrated. Joe, Joe's glass is starting to get half empty by this stage, I think. And we believed then the legislation was going to go up in, uh, in front of Parliament on the, in, by the end of the sitting in March. And it turned out it went up on the 15th of June. And there's three key elements to the, to the um, bill, and that's compulsory sterilisation with a tattoo, um, microchipping, and registration with the local council. We, and that was a huge win for us because the discussion had been any cat born from the date the legislation was introduced, but now we're talking about for any cat. The big loss... Um, is that cats have got to be six months and over. And I think that just proves that the AVA is a, a lot more powerful lobby than the animal welfare groups because it was the AVA that was advocating for the six-month sterilisation. So whilst it's not a perfect bill, I mean, we've got something to work with and it's obvious we've got to get the bill changed. So it's really quite pertinent at the moment because the bill is having its second reading in Parliament this week and it's being debated. And it's, it's quite disappointing because we'd written to the leader of the opposition, Eric Ripper, asking for bipartisan support. Um, we've got some members who are members of the Labour Party who sought our opinion on the bill and we said, apart from the six-month aspect, we were very, very happy. And the level of debate is just um, that the feedback I've got is quite, it's quite sad and it's built on all of that, that, all of that in misinformation. So we've got uh, the opposition saying, well, what's the problem here? 93% of cats are sterilised, so we don't really need legislation. Well, we crunched the numbers the other day and that 7% equates to if we use um, Jeff Young's stats, 2.1 litres per year, 4.5 litres, 4.5 kittens per litre, it equates to about 120,000 unwanted cats and kittens being born in Western Australia. So the 93%, it's not, it's, we've still got that room, that 7% we've got to capture. 
One of the other arguments is it's going to um, cost people a fortune to, to keep their cats. Now, in the bill, local government can actually have additional cat laws. So they can choose to have cat curfews. Um, they can choose to restrict the number of cats that per household has. But not being cynical, well, I am. I've been diagnosed being cynical since I was nine. But I believe that no local government is going to take on any more work than the bill will give them because cat management will have to come under their jurisdiction. In WA, no council whatsoever has a pan facility. Cat Haven is the pan facility for the whole of the metropolitan area. So they're going to have to police this bill so there's a lot of scare tactics being put out by the opposition. They're also claiming that it means pensioners um, can't have their cats because they can't afford the sterilisation. And I think the last one, what was the last one? Ludicrous arguments. Um, oh, it's a ploy by the Barnett government to make money. Now, I'm apolitical but I'm not quite sure where the government is going to make any money out of this. So I can't wait to get back to WA and sort of start to refute some of these arguments. There has also been lobbying by small cat groups for changes to the bill as well. So um, groups that probably have 27 members, but they don't like the idea of a tattoo in a cat's ear because of cosmetic reasons. Um, we've got the Cat Owners Association of Western Australia. Don't see why they should have to register a cat when it's already registered with their association, um, which is like the people with German Shepherds claiming, well, we shouldn't have to register our dogs with the council because they're already registered with the German Shepherd Association. So there's some very, very um, minor arguments going on, but they all seem to centre around the registration. The key items that we need in there are compulsory sterilisation and compulsory microchipping. When will the bill be law? It's the 1st of November 2011 and we've got a grace period of 12 months until the 1st of the 11th 13 for people to have complied with the bill. So is this the end? Well, not really. It's, a be it's really the beginning for us because I believe we are the main stakeholder in all of this. We are the one that bears the brunt year after year after year of kitten season. We put our own strategies in, but we can't do it in one single shelter. We've got to overcome the critics of the bill, um, and we need to make the bill work. And how are we going to do that? Okay, so the lively debate's been continuing in WA Parliament all this week, and this is what it really boils down to sometimes. Jackie inspired me yesterday, and I've changed my talk, by the way, to whatever's on the desk because of things I've heard here. Jackie called me to arms yesterday, and we've got this long lead time to the introduction of this bill. We've got time to make it work. We, we can get out there in D6. Part of the NDN um, campaign this year, we've gone into a snip and chip, which we've charged $85 on. No means testing, anyone can do that $85 snip and chip. The only condition of it was that you had to make payment at the time of booking. So it's a bit like your jet star flight that you got here on. If you don't show, tough luck. And it's really quite funny at the compliance that we've had this time. Normally these low-cost low sterilizations, be lucky if maybe 50, 60% of them turned up. By having the payment up front, no one's going to miss out. There's a number of councils do subsidise um, sterilisation for cats at the moment. And I think now from what we've learned here, we need to go out as an organisation and sell it to them. It's better to put money into desexing now in your community than building your pound and having to impound cats. And Christian Urisic, who sadly can't be here today, has an annual cat symposium um, and we're going to use that. We've already had a meeting with Christine and other like-minded um, cat lovers in Western Australia. Michelle from Pet Rescue came along because we really want to come together as a group. We may have differences in some areas, but we know legislation is the answer. 
and perhaps we can make it the inaugural G to Z meeting in Western Australia, but how are we going to overcome the critics? How are we going to make this bill work? I think for us, we, we know the responsible people that, that get their cats sterilised. It's, it's that small percentage, and it's getting to them. And I think, maybe I'm wrong, Joey, but Animal Welfare League you know, have put out 450 vouchers once a year and got a return rate of about 56. Is that right? No? Okay. Okay. It's, it's getting them to do it. It's just getting them to, to bring their cat in or us go out and get their cat for them. We need to work on a code of practice for pet shops in Western Australia. We don't have one. And again, that's a source of unsterilised animals going out, and that's something that we've discussed with the RSP. Say that's crucial that we need to do as soon as possible. We've already selling snip and chip vouchers to two pet shops in hotspot areas, and we know at least from two of them we are getting sterilised kittens going out. And some people see that as sleeping with the enemy, but you have got to. Someone said, not everything in animal welfare is black and white, and it's not. And you've got to use every opportunity you can to get these, um, these animals desexed. Um, we, we are asking for, for assistance from vets to do five litter funds per year per clinic, which is not a big ask. Um, and that's something we hopefully over the 18 months can progress as well. We've got a, a trading magazine called The Quokka, and The Quokka comes out every Thursday, uh, and it has columns and columns of free kittens in it in kitten season. It's free to advertise in this publication, and I'm not going to preempt too much, but we've got one of our volunteers and a trustee of Cat Haven here, Dale, who, despite working in a, a fairly high-powered, busy job as a, a senior lawyer, um, actually goes through the quokka, she buys it at um, six o'clock on a Thursday morning and starts going through the columns of free kittens offering to get the mum sterilised. Can we have the kittens and we'll sterilise the mum for you? And Dell's going to talk about that and that is one of, to me, the most important strategies that we use to get to these people because Dell uses, uh, Dell's disciples go out and pick these cats up for people I think they probably dread Thursdays at 6 o'clock just in, get, in case they get a call. But I've picked up cats for Dale, and what I've realised is these aren't bad people that don't desex their the, the cats. They're just ignorant. Um, they, they're poor. It, again, it comes down to socioeconomic factors. Uh, some of them really can't control the number of kids they've got, so they can't control the cats. Um, that is getting out to where part of the core problem is, and Dell will talk about that more in depth. And we're asking councils to outsource cat management to us. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So um, we don't want to relinquish, you know, look, taking cats in, but we do want to make sure that it's not a case of them going to pans and being euthanized in the, in the volume that they are in other states. The bill is not perfect, but it gives us a premise to work with. There's going to be wins and losses over the next two years, but that's the reason why we're going to do it. Hi, I'm Del. No pictures. You're stuck with just me. Until 2002, I didn't know that all over Australia, thousands of healthy, trusting, beautiful cats and dogs are put to sleep. I didn't know that until I became a member of Cat Haven and uh, sometime after that I became a volunteer and did what I guess a lots of, of you here have done, lots and lots of washing and trays and being in the kennels. Um, find it all sometimes quite stressful. There was a cat called Molly who I used to see every weekend when I was there. She's one of hundreds of thousands just like her. But I just felt she got to know me a little bit. I always used to talk to her when I went in. And, and in Molly, you'll get a turn next time. Next week it'll be your turn, I'm sure it will. And she would always still be there. One day um, I came in and she was in a crate out in reception getting adopted. Um, I hugged the poor bemused young girl who was buying her. 
threw myself into her arms, sobbing, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I think I realised then uh, maybe I should try to do something a little bit different to that, um, get myself away from the cats a little bit, try to do something to reduce the numbers. I heard that some staff had been phoning up the advertisers of free kittens to try to get them to get their cats sterilised and I thought I could do this systematically, read obsessively, I could really do this and I'm so grateful that Cat Haven let me do it. And for all you dog people, I'm sure it would work for dogs and puppies as well. The dog ads generally seem to be wanted, bitch, to mate with my dog. But I'm sure you could, I'm sure you could work with it. Um, and all states have got free papers that people can advertise in for nothing, and that's where the, a lot of the ads are. Not all of them. I've got spotters everywhere. Members, volunteers um, find the ads that are on the you know, signs outside the house, um, the signs in the shopping centres. And also reception staff tell me somebody's brought in a whole lot of kittens and we, she didn't bring the cat and we're pretty suspicious she's got a cat at home. And they'll give me the... All I need is the phone number and they go on my list. I'm up to 1,600 now. Um, it was some, with some trepidation, I first started making my phone calls, but honestly, there are not too many negatives. It's true that I've been sworn at, called an angel, hung up on, lied to, cheated, flirted with, thanked <laughs> profusely... All of those things. But mostly people are really, really happy to have my call. They want help with getting the cat sterilised. It's the same sort of thing that all of you know. It's just um, they don't have the money, they don't have a car, they don't have a licence, they can't drive, they haven't got a carry case, um, they've been sick, they've been in hospital, all kinds of reasons why they can't sort it out for themselves. So a lot of them are really, really happy that I ring. I thought you might be interested in some of the comments that I've heard from people. Um, so I've made a list of some of the more interesting ones. Um, how can I take away her right to be a mother? How would you feel if someone told you, you can't have children? It's unnatural. It's nature's way, just like the tsunami. Nature will deal with it. There were too many people and nature dealt with it. Nature will deal with the cats. It's against my religion. I don't want her sterilised when she's on heat. I'm a female, so I understand. I'm a female too. I didn't ask this lady whether she yowls and sticks her bottom in the air. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have wanted to hear the answer. There was Crayfish Man. If you don't, I, I didn't get any phone calls. If you don't come and take the kittens, I'm giving them to the Crayfisherman for bait. And he was joking when I did ring back after having had a big cry and tried to organise something and said, I'd go and get them myself. Yeah, he said he was joking. And, yeah. um, but my cat is half ragdoll. Um, stop harassing me. It's, it's months since the last time. I hardly ever breed. <laughs> my cats are purebred. I said to him, but you're selling them for $10 each. What, so have they got pedigree papers? What are they? They're purebred. They're purebred ginger. Another man was selling pedigree male blue tortoise shell. Um, so, yep, yeah, all the excuses under, under the sun. Now, where am I? I've got a whole heap of, of tools that, that I can help people with. I'm sure if you have volunteers who want to do something that could really be proactive to go and get these, these cats or puppies, dogs, to get them sterilised, they'd be really happy to do it. I've got six pages of instructions about how to do it. I did tell you I was obsessive. Um, <laughs> I've got um, lots of other people have helped me in so many ways. There's a, a pick-up map with um, little green balloons. You can type in the address where you need the volunteer to go to and, and it'll come up with the nearest... Um, sorry, where you, yeah, the address where the person is. It'll come up with the nearest volunteer. You can ring them. They can go and get the cats. Sometimes there are plenty of surprises, of course. They'll go to get... Someone's advertised... Free, uh, free to a good home kittens and you go out and find that they're six month old semi feral that even the owner can't catch <laughs> but um, you know, at least you, you get them and it takes lots and lots of tries sometimes but you, you do get them and I just love it when I can put the cross hatch over that, that person in my book, they're done, all their cats are done, I finally got to the end of it after trying for, so, for a couple of years um, but yeah I give them uh, the people I ring uh, oh they said I wanted to say about winter um, in winter, there aren't very many ads, and we can often get the kittens in winter uh, if you can beat the pet shop. I've phoned up at 7 o'clock to find that the 
yeah, the pet shop lady's already phoned and already gone and, and got the kittens. Um, I think somebody else mentioned offering, we'll do the cat for free if you give us the kittens. That, that's another good one that, that you can do. That, that works really well. Um. Hmm. Uh, I've got a huge list so that we know exactly what suburbs they're coming from. That does help with, with getting them. Um, and yes, the, the early sterilisation is so important. Yeah, quite often the, ex the reason is she's pregnant and I, I can't sterilise while she's pregnant. It was an accident. The vet said wait to six months and it happened. It's, it's too late. Or Oh yes, I wanted the children to have the experience. Um, these ones are sometimes mentioned foster caring, um, if, if they seem suitable perhaps, then you can have the experience and be part of the solution and I leave unsaid instead of part of the problem. So, um, anyway, I think I'd better stop. I, I know I've only got a couple of minutes, so there. Done. Oh, wait. Um, so if anyone is interested in getting my papers, I wore my red beret so you can easily find me. Come and 